Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Nona from TheAlignLover.com. In today's video, I will be discussing some petite friendly fall casual outfit ideas and I'll be using the lovely Reese Witherspoon as our inspiring example. To give you a little bit more context, Reese is considered to be a soft commune, so I will be giving both general soft commune styling tips as well as styling tips that are a bit more specific to Reese, her silhouettes, and her own personal style. I'll be covering different body types, different examples in the future, but I want to start off with some petite options because I know many shorter or more petite women tend to feel quite overwhelmed or swallowed up by layers so hopefully this helps and don't forget to like and subscribe all right i have four outfit formulas for you today the first one is a shorter jacket with crop jeans so the big picture themes here are the pairing of a cropped or shorter fitted jacket contrasting inner layers and slim jeans with more dainty footwear and all of this allows for non-bulky and proportionate layering that does not obscure a more petite smaller frame so let's start off with the jacket we're seeing a more narrow or slimmer fit and this allows for the tapering of the torso, of the shoulders, and of the arms to be clearly defined. The shorter hem, which hits around hip bone and above, also allows for the tapering of the torso and for the hips to be more clearly communicated. And this is so important for gamines and generally uh, petite women because we need these clearer reference points so that we're not obscuring our body by blending it into one continuous unit. In other words, the petite silhouette really needs a lot of definition, a lot of um, the nips and tucks and tapers, contours of the body to be clearly communicated so that we don't get lost. So this combination of well-defined shoulders a more narrow lapel a slimmer fit and a shorter length allow for the torso and the hips to really come through the inner layer is well contrasted with the outer layer this adds contrast it adds segmentation animation to the outfit again we are really preventing that single unit that very continuous and obscuring um, solidity that tends to occur without high contrast and contrast can be created with different materials different colors prints on solids um, it can be subtle and it can be strong but it definitely needs to be there um, especially with Again, the soft gamine, contrast, segmentation is a really essential accommodation. Um, and lastly, the jeans are slim fitted, which allows for a variety of footwear from pointed dainty kitten heels to dainty ankle strap heels to cute riding boots. So in all of these outfits, you can clearly see her shoulders, her hips, her knees, her ankles, her waist is quite strongly implied. You don't always need to expose the waist or the shape of the waist, but you can imply it. Um, it comes to the contrast of the rest of the garments too. The shapes are overall quite clean, upright. They're not flimsy. They're not overly um, clingy with a slight curvature. So there isn't a sense of being severely angular with any of the shapes. And again, strong contrast and segmentation. All right, so I'll go over some 
example outfits that I created on this collage making website called Your Style. It's very similar to Polyvore, if anyone remembers Polyvore. Uh, so starting off with the jacket, again, we're looking for that fitted, shorter or cropped shape with the collar or the lapels we're looking for a sense of narrowness or slight uprightness curvature or a notched detail again this helps create more emphasis on the narrowness of the neck compared to the width of the shoulders which allows for a sharper and more defined shoulder line to come through that is a quite common accommodation for most soft means because they tend to have that slight angularity or sharpness through the shoulders. In terms of the top, don't compete with a great piece of outerwear. Go simple, smoothly fitted. Um, there's many textures, many materials, um, but I recommend a slightly higher neckline, especially with a more cropped jacket. If you pair a cropped jacket with a really low neckline, it can start to mess with your proportions and it might not portray them accurately. As for the jeans, I just chose this straight pair of cropped jeans, very clean, not too much distressing. Um, that tends to look a lot more adaptable and it can go so well with anything from sneakers that add a pop of color to kitten heels to booties to riding boots all right so outfit formula number two is a little bit more casual a little bit more relaxed it's a casual jacket in this case either a shacket or a shirt jacket a utility jacket or a denim jacket a very simple top and jeans so again the big themes going on here um, there's a contrasted approach that prevents the looser outer layers and the slightly more relaxed pant options from swallowing up the body and getting rid of the distinction between the contours and the tapering of the body. So again, the shoulders, the implied waist, the hips, the knees, the ankles, they're still coming through quite clearly and strongly, even with a more relaxed outline um we're seeing contrast between the layers through graphic print through pattern or through color and we have a strong distinction between the top and the bottom so a more clear and crisp tuck that you can see here that lovely clean smooth tuck um and here with the higher rise that makes tucking in even more easy with the jackets we are still seeing a more narrow collar again this prevents the collar from overwhelming the shoulders and taking up too much space um, it also adds more emphasis to the neck which is obviously more narrow than the shoulders which really helps emphasize the distance between them the contrast the distinction between the neck and the shoulders really with the soft gamine what you're looking for is distinction clear separation of the different um, narrow points and wide points of the body all right so here are some examples of this outfit starting off again with the outerwear look for again i know i'm repeating myself but these are the details that really work for this body type and for reese specifically a more narrow and upright lapel or a stand-up collar or notched collars see how beautifully that notched collar and the narrower lapel really brings out the shoulder shape it starts off higher on the neck and then it really emphasizes the progression the line to the shoulder um, we're seeing tapering at the waist or um, an overall more close fit again implying the waist implying the tapering of the torso we're seeing a contrasting 
top or um, inner layer with a slightly higher neckline. And if you want to use graphics, I recommend keeping the graphics around the chest area. If the graphics are placed too low on the torso, it can distract from the crispness of the shoulders and it can kind of just drag the body down, especially with more petite bodies, not as much length to work with, obviously. With the pants wide, slightly um, cropped culotte style uh, jeans are great. Slightly boot cut or wide leg styles also work well. Again, what we really want to see is the clarity. Are the hips or the waist defined? You don't need to do both all of the time. You can um, clearly define the hips if you want to wear, again, outerwear. If you don't want to wear a higher rise pant, you don't always need to expose the waist. You can emphasize the hips a bit more. Are the knees visible or the ankles? Basically, is your leg defined as one unit or can we see where the contours are, where the knees are, where the ankles are? And shoes that help kind of continue that pattern are going to be a little bit more contrasted or lower vamp. All right, so outfit number three is one of my favorites because I think it really symbolizes Reese's persona. She's very perky, energetic, um, animated, and she is also a bookworm. She has that like billion dollar book club. So I think this is almost symbolic as an outfit, which is super fun to think about. Anyways, this outfit is composed of a layered sweater and collared shirt with jeans. And what the collared shirt does is contrast with the sweater, helps bring more emphasis again to the neck and the shoulders. Uh, a more crisp or narrow collar, again, emphasizes the narrowness of the neck and the higher neckline of the sweater allows for the collar to really pop and prevents the eye from being dragged down with a lower neckline, which allows the torso <laughs> to be communicated or represented more cleanly and clearly. And simple jeans help, again, communicate the contours of the lower body. All right, so here are some example outfits I composed. I really love the idea of strong contrast between the collared shirt underneath and the sweater or piece of knitwear on top. It just brings so much emphasis to the face as well. Great, especially if you want to wear a really perky high ponytail. It's a really good outfit for volume on top of the head. Um, so here we have a patterned Peter Pan collar shirt, which would look super cute with this knitted shirt. Um, and if you want a more dressy option, you can pair it with solid trousers, um, even cropped work trousers and cute little flats or Mary Janes. Um, this works well for contrasting solid garments like here. And it can look really cute with simple riding boots or patterned heeled loafers to just add a bit of animation to the outfit and here is some delicate stripes and a very delicate narrow collar on this shirt add some pop pops of color with the shoes or patterned sneakers all right then outfits formula number four just a nice nice coat with jeans so Finding a really good coat can probably solve like 80% of your fall and winter styling conundrums because you can just zip it up um, and it tends to just give shape and structure to your outfit so you don't have to be as careful with the fits of the inner layers. You can wear 
a more baggy or oversized sweater and it won't be as apparent. Um, but here I of course want to give you examples that will work even when you take off the coat. So when looking for a petite friendly coat, especially one that really accommodates uh, Reese's silhouette or a general soft gamine silhouette, I recommend double breasted coats because they tend to add a little bit more tailoring, more structure, and the row of buttons tends to emphasize the waist. It draws the eye towards the midline, and so the shoulders and the skirt of the coat tend to look more contrasted. For the collar, again, rounded, upright, slightly more narrow, Peter Pan, Mandarin, stand up, notched, all great options. When looking at details of a coat like the pocket, try to look for a coat that has um, welt pockets placed a bit below the waist so that it's not adding bulk to the waist. Um, and remember, if you want a slightly looser or longer coat, look for material that is a little bit more thin and elongated like with this coat this coat is obviously not as thick in material as this um, again we're looking for that balance so that you're not adding bulk and you can still convey a general sense of tapering throughout the body and here are some example outfits featuring again double-breasted coats with more delicate or narrow collars and a slimmer overall fit. You can wear these coats with a very simple boat neck sweater and mid-rise jeans with booties. You can wear them with a more contrasting pattern top, riding boots, and skinny jeans. Um, and then you can add even more contrast with a collared patterned uh, button down that really adds so much animation along the neck the jawline um, more solid slightly dressy jeans and fun little kitten heels all right so that is it for this video uh, i'll be posting this on my blog so you can get a better look at the actual collages and the written details um, and I'll see you in the next video. Let me know if there are any well-photographed celebrities who have a very approachable or inspirational style um, who you'd like me to discuss. And I'll see you later.